views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Well, Happy New Year from all of us here at Perspectives. And yes, it is that time of the year again. Now you've made up your mind, you set your goals, but just like last year, you start off well, but somewhere down the line, you gave up. Well, coming up on this edition of Perspectives, we are going to get some expert advice from a career coach to help us succeed in making our New Year's resolutions a reality. That's coming up next on this edition of Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. What's on your mind? Let him know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Let him know. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keep Real with many messages for you to know This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show Entertainment, he rocks it Politics, he locks it The host with the most would handle any topic Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines a Light Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life What's your Hey, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we invite you to watch us every week on Perspectives. And then also check us out on social media. Of course, Facebook, Bronx Net Perspectives. Also, my uh, professional page, Darren C. Hyman. And then also Twitter. You can find out about what's happening on the show. And uh, also let us know if you want to see something. You never know. Your perspective just might make it on right here on set. Well, coming up. It is a new year, yes, and Happy New Year to all of you. Our next guest in studio today, well, she's an executive coach, she's a career strategist, she works with business executives, journalists, entrepreneurs, and other professionals helping to boost their job performance. Now she's also a former Reuters TV anchor and a former BronxNet reporter you saw right here on BronxNet. I'm introducing you to Elizabeth Carazza, and she is back here on the show, helping us make sense of 2018 and really getting these resolutions and sticking to them. How you doing? I'm good. Thank good to have you. Me. Thank you for having me. It is so wonderful to be back at BronxNet. Like you mentioned, I was a reporter here, yeah. and it was such a great experience, and I love the people in the Bronx, so I was so excited when I got the call to be invited back on your show. Well, I'm glad to have you back. It's been a little while. Yeah. Good good to have you. Yes, been yes. busy, too, huh? Very busy, yes. Good. Busy. Well, you're going to help us out today. I sure am. Okay, so good. Let's talk about this. Okay. 2018 is here. And you know the drill. We all have these New Year's resolutions. We want to make it work. We want to make it stick. But talk to us about these resolutions because uh, for some people, it's very hard. It is very hard. But what I would say is the reason why it's hard is because there's not a proper plan or strategy in place. So this is what you got to do. You want to keep it simple. Just choose maybe one or two resolutions, okay? You want to set yourself up for success. Then write those resolutions down and have them visible mm -hmm. so you are constantly reminded of them. And studies show that those people who write their goals down have more of a chance of succeeding in achieving those goals than those who don't. And then the third but very important point is you want to create an action plan. How are you going to make this happen? So let's say you want to lose weight. How are you going to make that happen? Are you going to join a gym? Okay, when are you joining a gym? What about your eating plan? Are you going to do like a Weight Watchers? When are you going to join that? Okay, then you want to get your calendar out and start marking the dates as to when you're going to join the gym, when you're going to start working out, mm -hmm. when you're going to start eating healthy. These are all kind of tools you can use to actually make your New Year's resolution happen. So we actually say it, but we really don't plan it, is what you're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to have the plan, and you have to write it down, and then be reminded by it. So once you've, you've kind of mapped it out, you can either print it out, put it on your desk, right? Mm -hmm. Have it somewhere visible. Maybe it's on your nightstand. You know, I, have, I work with people, they tape it to their mirror, right? right? Or when they open that, you know, the bathroom cupboard to take out the shaving cream, it's taped right there. So you're reminded. Or maybe you're someone who doesn't like to print things out. You want to put it in your calendar. You can have calendar reminders, like mm -hmm. checking in once a week, once every two weeks, you know, once a day. It's up to you. But you have to put a little bit of work into it. But if you do, it's such a great feeling of accomplishment. What are we hearing is the predominant resolutions that we hear? You know, uh, what are the most 
popular ones that we're hearing about. Okay, so the top two, or the, they're kind of tied for the number one spot, is to be a better person mm -hmm. and to lose weight. Okay. Okay, so if you want to be a better person, that means different things to so many different people. So maybe it means you want to have more patience. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's more patience at home or with your kids. So what are you going to do to be a more patient person? Does that mean maybe you'll try some apps, maybe you'll do some meditation. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're going to take yoga because that calms you? You want to figure out, okay, what do I need to do to be a better person? Or maybe that means you want to volunteer somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if you want to volunteer somewhere and give back to be a better person, you know, what organizations do you feel like you have a connection to? What is a passion for you so you will continue to stick with it through the year? Most people start off good, and I'll say by middle of the month, <laughs> we're struggling. By the end of the month, already over. Um, how, what should we do if I fall off the wagon? Because, you know, sometimes people do fall off the wagon. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So you want to kind of figure out, okay, like I mentioned before, if I'm setting a New Year's resolution, make it simple and easy for mm -hmm. yourself. So you can kind of check the box. Then I like to talk about with the people I work with, setting goals for 2018 that will last you throughout the entire year. Again, writing it down. Let's think about what is the vision you want for your life, your business and your personal life for 2018. Write that down. It doesn't have to be pages upon pages. It could be a couple bullet points or a paragraph. Then what are the, the top five priorities you want to accomplish this mm -hmm. year? What are the priorities? Then month by month, January through December, what are the goals, big and small, I want to accomplish? But then, most important, mini action plan for each goal could just be one bullet point, okay? How am I going to make it happen? What do I have to do to make it happen? Mm -hmm. And those are one of the most important things, trying to really make it, make it, you know, make it happen. Uh, and if you're watching right now, listen, it's not too late to start. I mean, we're talking about it's the beginning of the year, and Elizabeth, it is not too late to start. It's not too late to start. It's definitely not, too, it's never too late to start. Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, you're busy. You didn't, you didn't write it down. You didn't make that priority. What if February rolls around? What if March rolls around? It's okay. It's never too late to start. Just kind of then skip over New Year's resolutions and go with your 2018 goals. And like I said, like those people who set goals and write them down have a greater chance of achieving their goals than those people where we all have good intentions. We think, okay, I wanna lose weight, I wanna be a better person, I wanna get a better job, I'm unhappy at my job. Okay, but you have to write it down and then create the plan for it. Mm -hmm. Take a quick break, coming back and talk more with Elizabeth in just a few minutes. But listen, if you're planning to do this for 2018, we want you to stay connected to us because what we're going to do is we're going to give you some tips on making it stick. And then we're going to find out what are some of the more popular ones. You've heard a couple of them already. And uh, what are some of the worst ones we can make? I don't know. We'll find out. Stay with us. We'll come right back in a few. We are back getting these life tips, getting ready for 2018. Elizabeth Carrazza, our guest in studio. And guess what? She's telling us a little bit about how to make these New Year's resolutions, how to make it work, and if you fall off the wagon, how to get back on and what you need to know. And so uh, we talked about popular resolutions earlier. We talked about what are some of the more uh, popular ones. 
What are ones that we're making that we're really uh, setting ourselves up for failure? Well, look, on the on the kind of the top six, it's it's be a better person, it's lose weight, it is eat healthier, mm -hmm. kind of exercise more, quit smoking, and they're all good resolutions to have, but you have to have a plan. Right. It's not going to happen unless you write it down put that action plan in there. Mm -hmm. Then mark it in your calendar. And then like, create a timeline for yourself. Like, so if you do want to lose weight, you know, how many pounds a week do you want to lose? Mm -hmm. And also, are you being realistic? We want to set ourselves up right. for success. And I believe in big, great goals. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But you want to make sure that you're, you're being realistic. Like, so putting, you know, I want to lose 15 pounds, a, a, you know, a week. I mean, that is unrealistic. Could it happen? <laughs> it's probably a little bit dangerous, right? Right. But, you know, setting a goal like maybe one pound a week is a little bit more realistic or half a pound. So you just want to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. But let me ask you, mm -hmm. what about New Year's resolutions for Darren? So New Year's resolution for me is I have to write this book. I'm writing a book. Nice. And I got to get that done. Nice. Um, and I've given myself until about April 15th. So I gotta get that done. That's big New Year's resolution. Okay, so where are we in the process for writing the book? So we are writing, and that's good. And I've created some time, and I've created the space to be able to do that. Before, time management's been a big problem for me. So to be able to manage my time, to be able to do it between travel, you know, all kinds of other stuff. Um, now I think I feel, I feel better. I got a plan. I'm spending, you know, a little time every day just doing and working, and I, I think I should be where I need to be. Good. So like you had mentioned, like, you know, making time. So I get that a lot. People ask me all, all the time, I don't have enough time. Well, this is what you need to do when you have a goal, like something like yourself, like mm -hmm. writing a book, is taking things off the calendar and putting in and prioritizing like your book writing, right. right? And so freeing up that time will make you feel like you're more in charge and more in control and that this is something that you can achieve and accomplish. And you know, you really want to think about and prioritize, like I said, when you create the 2018 goals, like what are those top five priorities, right? Mm -hmm. For you, your book would be right in there. And you want to think about clearing the calendar. What can I move until later? What can I move until the spring? Or what can I pass off maybe to somebody else? Or maybe I, I was going to take on another project, but now I've looked at my priority list, and it's not on my priority list. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that in my goals for maybe maybe the summer, mm -hmm. so I can really get this done and prioritize and get it done for for the deadline. So many times I think people mess up because of time management, honestly. Yes, yes, and that is very tricky, and I work with people all the <laughs> time on this issue. Mm -hmm. So time management is really important, and again, having the goals there having your priorities there, mapping out. Some people like to do it in quarters. I prefer to do it monthly so you can really see. Mm -hmm. You know, no goal is too big or too small. Mm -hmm. And you want to have your calendar there with you when you're setting those goals. So you, you ensure that you're moving forward and you're creating the time that you need to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And so if I run into trouble, if I run into problems, trying to fulfill this, trying to get this done, uh, we talked about getting back on the wagon. What are some of the things that I need to do to encourage myself to, to really push through this? Because, yeah, you know, you make these, like, if I don't meet my deadline, then 30 seconds later I'm going to be, all right, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, what do I do to stay on the wagon? Okay, so you want to take a look, like, what is my plan? What is working for me and what is not working for you? So it's like all of a sudden everything's going well but then you said, maybe I fall off the wagon. You want to change course. Because sometimes we create this plan for ourselves and you think, okay, I gotta stick to it, I've gotta follow it, I've gotta make this happen. But if it's not working for you, you want to change course and figure out, okay, how can I do this? Mm -hmm. So maybe then starting to create time when you get home, putting it in the calendar to write the book. Or maybe you know you're exhausted or you have family priorities. So maybe doing it first thing in the morning or on your commute to work, maybe you're on the train. Mm -hmm. So really trying to change it up to figure out how it can work for you. Mm -hmm. So as we look forward to 2018, a lot of you are making resolutions. Listen, it's never too late to start. Elizabeth told us that already. You gotta keep it going. And if you fall off the wagon, you get right back on. And so uh, time frames and setting goals. Obviously, those are the biggest things. I was looking at some of the top 2018 New Year's resolutions. Uh, be a better person, weight loss, we, 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 we talked about that. But talk to us about burning out here because a lot of people suffer 
from burning out. And that just cancels any kind of resolution you want to make. I agree, especially at this time. The holidays can be a wonderful time, but it can be an also very taxing time. Mm. You're shopping, you're trying to get things done, you might be traveling. All of a sudden the kids are off school, so you're helping manage them and you're working. So it can burn out really kind of compounds at this time. So the new year is a perfect time to think about, okay, I feel burnt out. Once you start feeling like that, exhaustion, maybe a little edgy, swirled in with a little anger that you're thinking, where is this even coming from, right? Mm -hmm. It's burnout, this is what burnout is. So let's put in your goals, make a plan for yourself, write it down in the notes of your phone, in your calendar, wherever, whatever works for you. You really wanna make sure that you're going to kind of take this seriously. Mm -hmm. Because when you take care of yourself, everybody wins. But you know when you're not feeling well and you might be edgy, mm -hmm. Nobody's happy in this situation. Okay, right. so think about what fulfills me. What fills my cup back up? How can I refill my gas tank? Mm -hmm. So that might be sleeping in. Well, people say, I have kids. Well, like make a plan, okay? Mm -hmm. So can a babysitter come? What about parents or in-laws, okay? Um, do you like to watch sports? Does that energize you? Do you like to play sports? Does that energize you? Mm. Maybe you like to go shopping. Maybe you like to spend time with your kids. Maybe you like to go for a walk. Whatever that is, you want to take advantage of that. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. what fulfills you? What makes you happy and recharged? Spending time, you know, traveling is one. Um, and then also I play golf, you know, I'm trying to get better. You know, so I wanted to spend more time getting better and doing that. And, and so those two things are like, I'll put them at the top right there. Uh, you know, between the travel and, spend, and, and playing some golf and that's it. And spending time with my son. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Vacation or mm. staycation. Right. Okay. I like that. Staycation. Staycation. We can't all do vacation. Right. right? We I can do staycation. I, yep. We I'm, can I'm, definitely. I'm borrowing that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do your staycation, but then, okay, but when you're on your staycation, you don't want to then all of a sudden be running around and running errands and doing tasks and fixing everything in the house and then you're exhausted by the time you go back to work. Right. Create that mini plan. It could be just as easy as writing it in the notes of your phone. And you want to think about this. What is the goal of this vacation or staycation? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the three main things that are going to energize me so I can beat burnout? Right. Mm -hmm. And you then creating again that action plan. And it could be just a few points and then you can go back to it. You know, mm -hmm. am I feeling better? Am I feeling recharged? Yes. Right. Great. No. Let me look at my list. Elizabeth is helping us. I want you to stay with us because we're going to have more show. She's going to help us out a little bit further. I hope that you're taking, writing some notes and taking this down because it really could be dramatic in changing your life. So listen, if you want a better 2018, stick with us. We're giving you the tips and everything you need to know. Come right back right after this. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. My name is Harvey Lauer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. They call me Maxi, but I prefer Tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five.
And we are back here on Perspectives. Elizabeth Carrata, our guest here with us. And listen, been talking to us about New Year's and making these New Year's resolutions. And uh, you've, been, you've been quite helpful here. And so talk to us, because as I gave in the intro, you know, you worked at Reuters and then, you know, you were here with us and you've been around and you made this transition, if you will. I did. I did make a transition. And I work with a lot of people that are looking to make a transition in the new year, mm -hmm. whether, you know, it's changing industries or changing jobs. And, you know, I say to people, well, how are you going to make this happen? Number one, you want to start networking more and really pinpointing who can help me. Who can help me? Do I need to be more active on LinkedIn? Do I need to go to more industry events? And then you want to craft almost like a little mini elevator pitch, okay? Mm -hmm. What are your greatest attributes? When you're speaking with somebody and they're in front of you and you feel like they can help me, what can you say in a natural way? How can you weave in a story that, that makes you look good so mm -hmm. they think, wow, I want to help this, people, this person or wow, I want them to work for me. Right, yeah. and that's important. That's very important. So give us the advice of, you know, we talked about New Year, checking in throughout the course of the year. How do we do things on a monthly? Uh, or, or how should I be checking the monthly, uh, quarterly? How does, how does it go for evaluation, if you will? That is a great question. It depends on what you feel will be most effective for you. So in the goal document that I recommend people make, you know, it, it's basically monthly. But if you know that you're somebody that should really be checking in weekly, mm -hmm. You want to set that calendar reminder because we get so busy. Life happens. You know, big things happen. Small things happen. You're working. You're with the kids. Like, life gets crazy. That's why you need to always have your goals and your resolutions visible in order to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I'll share with you. My resolution for, for this past year was once I had my baby, I had a baby in February. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a second baby. I knew I wanted to lose the baby weight because it took a lot longer last time, the mm -hmm. child before, because I didn't create a plan. So I created the plan. I had the goals. I set the timeline, okay? I lost 30 pounds. And in the middle of it somewhere, all of a sudden, you know, I was doing Weight Watchers. I had a, a personal trainer for a short amount of time. I realized that I couldn't go to the gym as much and I couldn't go to um, the Weight Watcher meeting. So I changed course. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about before, when something's not 100% working, even though I love both of those things, I changed course. So I started another plan. I did the 21 day fix just to lose those last seven pounds because I knew I could do, I was looking for that exercise plan from home. Mm -hmm. So when something is at 100% clicking, because maybe circumstances change, change course. Changing course is what we're doing. Got to make things better. 2018, you have to take the proactive steps in order to do that. Elizabeth told us about, look, making those New Year's resolutions, how to make those resolutions come to life if you fall and get off the wagon, how to get back up. And then really, listen, sticking to it. And, and a lot of this is about vision, right? Because it's about seeing the vision, creating the vision, and writing the vision. Exactly. Again, just hit the nail on the head. What do you want your life to look like in 2018 and beyond? You have the opportunity. It's a fresh year. It's a new start to kind of think about and create the life that you want. You're in charge. You're in control. You can do this. You just have to have the vision. Write that vision down. And you'll, you know, you'll get to paper or the computer and you're not 100% sure. That's okay get it on the front burner, check back in, in with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, these types of goal plans, you know, they can take months and your goals are a living and breathing document. Mm -hmm. If something changes in your life, something right. changes and all of a sudden, like let's say your book, you know, you had planned on April, but all of a sudden, you know what? Something else has, has taken over and there's another priority. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my deadline for June. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give myself a couple more months. Or maybe you feel, or someone feels like they're rushing something, but they don't want to rush at it. It's okay to extend a deadline if that works for you. And as I was going to lead into about making those adjustments, because sometimes we don't make the adjustments, we just are hard and fast with it. Don't make the adjustments, but you're recommending make adjustments as time goes on. Oh, yes. 
you want to always change course if something's not working for you. And sometimes it's hard because we have something in our mind, we have a plan, we feel like we know what we're doing, it's going to happen, and all of a sudden we've signed up for a program or we're working with somebody or we've done something that it's not a good fit. So don't force the fit when the fit is not working. And I tell people all the time in jobs, because I work with so many people that are so unhappy in their jobs. Mm -hmm. So either, one, you want to stay in the position you're in, but you want to be happier. How, do, how can I be happier? Start to ask for what you want. Start to ask for what you want. Is it a raise? Is it a title change? You know, you want to be strategic. Is it the right time? Is my boss in a good mood? Right. Have, I, have I listed all the points as to, you know, why I deserve a raise? You know, remind your boss all the great things you did this past year. You know why? He or she is, is not going to remember everything, especially they've got their own pressures. They've got their own interests at heart. They might be managing other people. So don't assume that people always remember to. All right. Well, Elizabeth has been here for this whole half hour, giving us everything that you need now. You find our information at the bottom of the screen. You can see and find out more if you need it for yourself. But hopefully this show has helped you to get the new year off right. And remember, if you want to get the new year off right, you have to start with a vision and then follow the vision all the way through. Elizabeth, thanks for coming by and sharing with us. you got to come back again. I would love to. Absolute pleasure, Darren. All righty. Elizabeth Carazza, our guest in studio. Listen, that about wraps up for this edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Jaime, inviting you to stay connected every week where we bring you new, exciting information for all of us here on a set of Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime saying take care, God bless, and we'll see you soon. And that happened like in 28 minutes. All right. This was Relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable, no fables, just speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. Coming to you from our BronxNet studios, four new shows highlighting some of the best of the Bronx has to offer. We sit down with political leaders on In the District and discuss local legislation, events, and issues. See how the community and business come together with The Bronx Now on BronxNet. Nosotros features leaders from a Latino community. Meet those who are moving to make a difference in public service, business, arts, and culture. Looking for new and exciting dining experiences? Then you'll want to savor the Bronx and try new restaurants and eateries that fill the borough with delicious dishes. We have it all, so experience the Bronx in new and fresh ways on BronxNet.